Well, the outreach committee set itself up on the first day, on the 15th of October. Um, basically, someone got a big whiteboard, made a big long list of all the working groups that were being set up, and volunteers put their names down. Um, so I volunteered for the, for the outreach group, and a group of about four of us, I think, there were met on the first day, um, and basically got to work, because um, right from the start it was unclear about whether the police were actually going to allow us to occupy Martin Place for the rest of the evening and overnight. Uh, so we knew we had to start straight away with trying to secure support from unions and community groups for Occupy Sydney in order to ensure that um, it was on a strong footing. Um, so Occupy Sydney generally is, is based on a whole lot of working groups and there have been new ones formed right up until yesterday actually there were still new groups being formed to work on various projects and logistics for the site and each of those groups organises amongst themselves and then each night um, while the while the protest site was maintained at Martin Place uh, we report back to the General Assembly uh, on the work that we've done and put forward any proposals we have that need to go to the group and then they're uh, voted on by the group so that we have some direction in what we're doing. So I guess we've kind of focused our main um, outreach work on securing trade union support and on uh, also trying to broaden Occupy Sydney out beyond the sort of networks that might normally get involved in social campaigns really to the next level. Um, so we, our work with the trade unions has been, um, is still fairly being developed but what was amazing was the, um, the level of support that was forthcoming straight away. And I think the fact, for example, that the CFMEU happened to have their state council meeting on October 15, which was the day the occupation started, there was a great opportunity for um, an activist who was also part of that council to move a motion uh, for support. And luckily, one of the members of the outreach team is also a um, elected rep within the Maritime Union and that allowed us to make that connection and next thing we knew the MUA had basically matched, um, matched that solidarity and things have kind of gone like that. It's been a pretty organic process in many ways, just really making the connections with people and I guess we had a, um, you know, I think what was a very positive step last uh, Thursday night when uh, Unions New South Wales adopted a resolution to support the rally that was just uh, held on the 22nd of October, um, which really did help to bring things to a next, the next level um, in the union movement. Have there been attempts to now go back to the trade unions uh, to ask them for a response following the police, um, violent police dispersal of the camp early on Sunday morning? Well, actually, outreach a meeting tonight, and that'll be one of the items that we need to discuss, actually. Um, because certainly for, um, you know, I think that work needs to be done. I mean, what was, was great was that straight away we had the Secretary of the Fire Brigade's Employees Union, Jim Casey, come out and participate in a press conference at one o'clock yesterday, um, condemning the actions of police. And Jim basically put forward that he felt that history would be on the side of the protesters um, in the end. And that was a terrific show of solidarity from the FBEU. And of course as well, um, uh, there's been a lot of people ringing contacts within the union movement to let them know what's happened and we've certainly had a very strong response um, from the unions that have already given support to Occupy Sydney. The big business media has attempted to, um, to paint the, the people in the occupation as ferals and hippies and uh, you know people who don't know what it's like to have a job. What has been your experience uh, in terms of taking the issues of the occupation to, to, to workers and to trade unions? Well, I think in a state like New South Wales, there's an immediate uh, connection that a lot of workers have with Occupy Sydney. And I mean, there are a number of us who are uh, members, employees of public institutions. I work for a university, others are teachers, nurses, you know, firefighters, um, you name it, you know, public servants. Uh, and right now, of course, with Barry O'Farrell's attacks on the public sector, 
um, the, there's a lot of common ground between the sorts of struggles that are going on against those attacks on industrial relations and attacks on services with the aspirations and aims of a movement like Occupy Sydney, far from it being a majority of, you know, even students or um, unemployed people, I think what I found most interesting is that there are a lot of people who come and go from, or who've come and gone from the site back to work, um, who come every night after work, stay, you know, a couple of nights a week. That's a pretty common experience of a lot of the people that I've been working with um, through Occupy Sydney. They're, they're both workers, they're activists, um, you know, or they're workers and they've never been involved in a movement like this. And, you know, uh, it's been a whole new experience for a lot of them. So it's it's an extremely broad movement, actually, and not doesn't fit any of the usual sort of stereotypes that you often see in the mainstream press about social movements. Has there been any link up or connection made between the Occupy movement and the, and, and the Qantas workers? Yes, yeah, some very concrete links. In fact, through you know initiatives of people involved in Occupy Sydney, we've now um, made links with the Qantas um, licensed aircraft engineers. And in fact, uh, one of their employees of the union actually spoke at our mass rally on October 22nd. So we've made, we've made a very, uh, very strong link there. And the fact that um, this week Qantas will be holding its AGM on Friday and at that AGM there's going to be a proposal which is going to be extremely controversial um, to increase uh, the CEO's uh, salary package by 71% while at the same time Qantas workers, you know, pilots, engineers, um, members of the TWU have been struggling with the company now for over a year to get a wage rise of 5%. Um, you know, and this is this is just illustrative of the one percent versus the ninety-nine. Uh, you know, just you couldn't have it any plainer than that. Um, you've got Alan Joyce on the one side with his five million dollar salary package per annum, and then you've got you've got a uh, aircraft engineers and and workers um, in the airline industry struggling um, against a you know belligerent management for a measly three or five percent per annum.